All right. Hello, Cloud Animators. And in this tutorial today, I'm going to show you how to work with some of the motion effects that we have in the Cloud Animator service to create beautiful animations just like these. So many times we've seen animations like this. We've seen these in many uh, infographic videos or when people do animated intros to their own videos on YouTube. You can see that sometimes they use animations like these. So now it's very, very simple for you to do this uh, with the Cloud Animator service because we have these built-in motion effects that you can use. So let me go into the service here and I'm going to play back um, this project. And, and to, you'll notice that there is not, there's nothing to this. Basically, these are all individual items and each one has its own motion effects assigned to it. Okay, so in the basic mode, I am not able to see the mul multiple uh, time tracks. I'm only able to see the ones that I s highlight. So if I go to rocket here, I will be able to see that spaceship um, time track. But I am not able to see uh, what kind of motion effect I have assigned because we're still in the basic mode. So what we want to do here is click on advanced mode, and this will open up all the other uh, time tracks and you will be also be able to see uh, the types the types of um, motion effects that we have assigned for each one so for example for clock here we have um, uh, uh, the first uh, time uh, time effect that we have motion effect here is the entrance you can see this in this hashed area this is followed by an emphasis that runs all through the middle of the time track and then finally um, it ends with the uh, exit uh, uh, motion effect that we have. And these are highlighted here on the right side. So let me try to uh, open one from scratch. That way we will be able to better see um, what effects can we drop in. So I'm going to, it's the only thing you need to do is basically to bring in an asset. This can be an image, this can be a shape, all right? And you can use a centering options here, the automatic centering options, uh, to make sure that your asset is right in the middle of your project. Let me bring this down a bit so we can see this better. And um, so at the very beginning here, if I want, if I have my time scrub on the very first uh, keyframe here at the beginning, you'll notice that automatically my motion effects will be open. Um, normally, if I just go to transform, we will be able to change the position and the scale of my asset. Um, but once I'm inside the advanced mode, finally, I can click into the motion effects and I can see a wide range of built-in effects that I can easily use. So if I have my object selected, I can hover over. Um, and we have multiple um, uh, effects here. So there's three categories. There's entrance, there's emphasis, and there's exit. Okay, at this point, the emphasis one is not highlighted. I'm un unable to select any one of these because my time scrub is at the very, very beginning of my, 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 my time track. If I bring the time scrub to any other place that is not the beginning, then the emphasis one or the middle animations will be able to, will appear and I will be able to use them. So let's go all the way to the beginning here. Okay. Um, and now click on that object here. Oh, wait, wait, wait to the beginning. And I'm going to go to entrance. So I just need to hover my mouse over any of these motions so that you could preview them. We have enlarge. You'll notice that a lot of these motions here, um, they have a very organic feel to them. They're very cartoonish because we've created these so that you can create these lively organic behaviors with your assets. We don't want it to look too robotic or, or too linear. So some of these actually have sort of an elastic bouncy effect, which make it very, very attractive. So let's start with the first one here, entrance. I kind of like this moving one here, and I can select that, and it'll be added. You'll notice down here that immediately that hashed area is added to my time track. This will let me know that this is the duration of my entrance um, motion effect. And right now as I added that part, you'll notice that down here at the bottom, we also have direction. The direction will determine how that motion effect will enter 
uh, how my asset will enter the project. So I can choose original, which will just make it appear here. Bottom to top, okay, it'll slide from the bottom into the top. And then top to bottom, we have right to left, left to right, and our series of other ones. So the design philosophy here is that um, the, your on-screen location will determine the final position of your direction. So if I bring, let's say, my asset to the left, okay, actually, I'm sorry, I should have had the time scrub at the beginning here. That way I don't set a keyframe. So back to the beginning. If I move, for example, my asset to the left, that will be the final target location of my direction. So independently of that direction and that motion effect, my asset will always end in that, in that location that I set from the very beginning. And I can center this again if I'd like. So besides using the direction, I can also um, try to work on the time if I wish that motion to play very fast or very slow. And I can play around with other um, speeds. You'll notice down here at the bottom that I also have the fade in option selected. So this will basically allow my asset to fade in at the very beginning. Oh, left to right, let's go slow. Let's play this. See, you'll see that fade in effect there. And I can turn this off if I like to, where it's not fading in. So let me turn this on, I actually like how it looks. Okay, so once we have that initial entrance, then we want to add an emphasis or the other part here. But I need to drag my time scrub away from that initial starting point. Okay, and I need to make sure that my time scrub is after um, that hashed area for my entrance. Notice that emphasis is still uh, unhighlighted. And as soon as I drag my time scrub out of that area into an empty area, now the emphasis section it will be will be available and I can hover over to select any of these emphasis motions um, from the library. We have bounce, stuff like jiggle, flips. So you don't have to you don't have to click on anything, just hover your mouse and you will be able to preview a lot of these really, really cool animations inside. So I kind of like this pulse one here. I think this does a good job at bringing attention to your asset. So I'll click on that, and immediately down here, you'll see that another keyframe was added, and that hashed area appeared, which indicates that this is the, the length of that emphasis pulse motion playing. Likewise, just like we did for the entrance, I can choose the speed, if I want this to go extra slow. And I can also choose to loop. I can choose if I want this motion to play once, to play twice, or even three times. And this will dictate, that hashed area will dictate the length of that uh, emphasis motion. I can also choose to play it automatically, which means that it will continue playing all through the end of my project. Okay, but we do have to be careful with this option. Because, for example, if I have my time scrub uh, hovering over uh, my, my emphasis hash, hashed area, right? And then let's say later on I wish to add an exit motion. I can go to exit, and right now I'm not clicking on anything. I am just simply hovering over to see what kind of exit motions that we have. So I can move... I can roll out of the picture, I can enlarge and leave. So there's a, a lot of uh, uh, different effects that we can use. So I actually like this moving one. It sort of looks like he's gaining momentum and then he's out. So I'm going to select that. And notice that because my time scrub is over, it's overlapping uh, the emphasis one, then it'll completely override that motion. And it'll make sure that only my exit motion is being completed. This is the final exit motion. Okay? So if I, if I do that, I'm basically going to be forced to have to add um, that emphasis motion all over again. So for the exit, let me just finish up here. I can choose the direction, and obviously I can choose the time if I'd like. What's the speed? Uh, and also fade all uh, at the same time. So the entrance and the exit both have fade options. 
but the middle part, the emphasis does not have a fade. So that's something you need to, to, to keep in mind. So if I wish to have my emphasis here uh, on automatic, I simply move my time scrub, drag it to where I have an empty spot, and this will highlight my emphasis again, and I can choose pulse, and then I can choose automatic. And this will ensure that that emphasis motion will be playing through that, throughout that entire uh, track length, okay? So just keep that in mind. And as soon as we start reaching the exit one, it'll play that last motion. So if I drag, for example, if I wish to extend my, uh, my, my animation, I can drag at the end of this time track and I can extend it. And because the emphasis is on automatic, it will automatically fill that entire length in order to fulfill that animation length that we have assigned to it. All right, so not much to this, uh, just some basics on what to watch out for if you are dragging in, if you're adding these motion effects, and if they're overlapping one on, on top of the other. Now, one more thing I'd like to mention is um, if you wish to remove um, the, the, these motions, if you wish to add another one or remove, remove them completely, what you have to do is that you have to drag your time scrub to the very beginning of that motion. For example, here we see the time, the keyframe of my, my, my emphasis motion. So make sure that you are there, Hold or oh, you can just hover over it, go into your motions and click on none, okay? Notice that because I don't have my keyframe, I don't have my time scrub, I'm sorry, over the keyframe, it says you cannot add a key in the motion effect area. This is the motion effect area. You can only add a key at the beginning where we have the keyframe right there. See, that is the keyframe. Oh, let me bring that back. So now if I click on none, this keyframe will remove, will add a none, and I no longer have uh, that emphasis. And the same thing applies to my other motion here. I can click on none, and this will remove it. But notice that at the at the end, I don't have a keyframe. Okay, it, necess it doesn't necessarily add a keyframe um, to uh, my motion. I just need to hover over um, that hashed hashed area. Uh, if I wish to add that none for exit. All right, so that's basically it. Um, I hope that this can allow you, um, give you better ideas on how you could use the advanced timeline and use these uh, motion effects with multiple time tracks. And that way you can see the relationship between them and you can determine which of these motions you wish to start first, which um, tracks, which assets you wish to start playing first or emphasizing first, and if you wish them all to end at the same time or later on. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. We hope this can help you. And we'll come back further with a more advanced tutorial soon. Thank you.